Well, good morning everybody and welcome to today's morning devotion. And um, I'm going to give you the next word in the, the series in the Shema that we were doing, which I found on the U Bible app. It's a, a wee reading plan from the Bible Project people. And um, you've heard me speaking about them before. One of my favourite discoveries. I think it was a friend of mine actually that discovered them. Um, but they just bring things to life so well. They've got lots of different cartoon styles that they use and um, it's just really helpful and illuminates things for you. So um, let me just read out the scripture that goes along with it and it's in Deuteronomy which is the Old Testament, one of the Old Testament books and it's from um, verse 4 of chapter 6 but I'm just going to read the bit before that as well just to set the scene and the section is called Love the Lord Your God. These are the commands, decrees and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you're crossing the Jordan to possess. This is um, Moses speaking to the children of Israel. So that you, your children and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you so that you may enjoy a long life. Hear Israel and be careful to obey so that it may go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, your, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant, then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. And uh, that's up to uh, verse 12, it goes on. And you can read that yourself. Um, but the, the Shema is particularly verses 4 and 5, uh, quite well known. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. And um, today's word is heart. And um, it's really quite interesting what the uh, Bible Project folk bring out from that word. And I'll let you see the, the clip now. For thousands of years, every morning and evening, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their devotion to God. They're called the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And as for you, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your strength. We're going to look at the fourth key word in this prayer, heart, which in Hebrew is sometimes pronounced levav, or more often in a shorter form, lev. Now, different cultures throughout history have had different conceptions of how the human body works, and this is also true of the ancient Israelite writers of the Bible. They knew that the heart was an organ in the chest that sustains life. There's mention of a heart attack in the Bible, Naval, whose heart died inside of him and he became like stone. But the biblical authors talk about the heart in many other ways that might seem strange to modern readers, and that's because these Israelites had no concept of the brain or any word for it. They imagined that all of a human's intellectual activity takes place in the heart. For example, you know with your heart in the Bible. Your heart is where you understand and make connections. In the book of Proverbs, wisdom dwells in the heart. And your heart is what you use to discern between truth and error, like Solomon did when he was king. So the heart is where you think and make sense of the world, and it's where you do more. In the Bible, the heart is where you feel emotions. You feel pain in your heart, like Hannah did when she couldn't have any children. In fact, the phrase, a broken heart, comes from ancient biblical Hebrew. You also experience fear in your heart. Your heart can melt or be distressed. Your heart can even be depressed. But then on the flip side, your heart is where you experience joy. In Hebrew, to be happy is to be good of heart or to have a heart of joy. 
So the heart is the generator of physical life. It's also the center of your intellectual and emotional life, and there's more. In biblical Hebrew, the heart is where you make choices motivated by your desires. So David had it in his heart to build a temple for God. Your heart is where your affections are centered. They're called the desires of your heart. And if you really want something and go after it, it's like what Nathan said to David, whatever's in your heart, go and do it. So then, in the Bible, the heart is the center of all parts of human existence, as in the well-known proverb, guard your heart because from it flows your whole life. Now the prophet Jeremiah believed that the human heart was fundamentally broken. He said, the heart of a human is deceitful above all, irreversibly sick, who can even understand it? He had watched a whole generation turn away from God. They started sacrificing their children as if that were a good thing. So this is why in the imagination of the Hebrew prophets, the only hope for humanity is the total renewal of the human heart. Moses predicted that if Israel was ever going to love their God, their heart would need to be circumcised, which is a very vivid and surprising metaphor about removing evil and stubbornness from the human heart. David, after he committed murder and adultery, pleads with God to create in me a pure heart. The prophet Ezekiel hoped for a day when God would remove the heart of stone and give his people a new heart of soft flesh, which is very similar to Jeremiah's hope that God would write the commands of the Torah on the hearts of his people. And that brings us all the way back to the Shema. Every day, God's people are called to devote to God their whole body and mind, their feelings and their desires, their future and their failures. This is what it means to love the Lord your God with all of your heart. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that clip and those explanations. And uh, it's just really interesting, isn't it? How much we use the heart for things. It's, it's so much more than just the flesh and blood and that muscle pumping the oxygen and the blood around our bodies. Um, and I've got a wee heart necklace on today. That was coincidental. Um, I didn't go and put that on just to do this video. But, uh, you know, it just is a great reminder to us. I just love the way that they explain that about um, that it's it, what it means is that morning and evening we are to surrender everything about ourselves, you know, how we think, how we feel, our actual bodies, you know, everything at the Lord's feet. And we might not have that ritualistic um, uh, prayer in our own culture and uh, society here the way that the Jews do, but I think that that's a good practice to be in where we do that morning and evening. We we come to the Lord's presence and we lay all that we are at his feet. And, uh, you know, that's maybe something that we should start doing if we're not already doing that. Um, it's, a, it's not a bad thing to do. And um, shall we just have a prayer time now and we'll finish it there for today. Father, just thank you so much for this little devotion that we've heard today. Thank you, Lord, that you are instructing us to love you with all of our being. Everything about us, Lord, we need to commit that to you. We need to lay that at your feet. We need to be sure, Lord, that you are coming first before all the other things that we might have crowding in on our lives, including um, things that we must see to and things that we must um, work at. Lord, you are in front of all of those things. Help us, Lord, to keep our perspective in the right place in these days. Thank you, Lord, that you will help us to complete all of these things, Lord. You you never leave us on our own. And Lord, if it is our heart's desire to follow after you, if it is in our heart, Lord, to surrender all we have to you, then Lord, you will help us to complete that, to fulfil that. And we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that you came to, to die just for that so that we could be completely reunited with God our Heavenly Father. You paid the price for all of our sin and just like that picture of the, the black heart, um, Lord Jesus, you have taken all of our sin so that that can be removed. If only we surrender to you, Lord, and lay ourselves at your feet. So I just thank you once again for that, Lord Jesus. And I pray today, Father, that you would reach out to any who are watching this who don't have that personal relationship with you. Thank you, Lord, that it is a personal relationship. It's not a religion. It's not a ritual. Lord, it's alive. It's a relationship. And I just thank you for that. In your precious name, Lord Jesus, I pray today. Amen. Well, God bless you today. And um, I hope you're really enjoying these Bible Project clips. I am. 
and uh, they've got a lot more online that you can go and look up yourself and uh, some of it's in the, the Bible, the U Bible app and some of it's just online but certainly well worth a look at so I'll leave that with you till the next time. Okay, bye for now.